Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam and I'm a test prep expert. Now over the years I've helped countless students prepare for their language proficiency tests and one of the things I've noticed is that even if your level of English is good enough for the score that you need, you don't always get the results. Why is that? Well, that's because there's an extra element to a language proficiency test called test wiseness, which is your familiarity with the tasks and also your ability to use the right techniques and strategies in order to maximize your score. And this is what my channel is all about. In this series of videos that you're about to see, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to improve your test wiseness for CELPIP writing task one, the email task. I hope you enjoy this series of video lectures and I hope you can benefit from this master class. Good luck. Hello everyone and welcome to this CELPIP writing task one master class. My name is Sam and in this series I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to achieve your desired score in CELPIP writing. We're going to start with task one. Let's jump right into it. Now in CELPIP writing there are two tasks. So there is what we call the email task and then there is also what we call the survey task. Now, in this master class, we're going to be covering the email task, but I'll also be making a separate master class for writing task two, which is the survey task. Now, in total, you have 53 minutes to complete both of these tasks together, but if you want to specifically look at task one, for this task, you have 27 minutes. So 27 minutes to complete the email task. What are we supposed to do for this task? Well, you're supposed to write an email as the name suggests, and this email needs to be between 150 to 200 words. Now, this is a range that's being described. If you compare this to a test like IELTS, you'll see that in the IELTS, there's a minimum number of words. So you have to write above 150 words. Whereas in CELPIP, you have to write within 150 to 200 words. So it's best not to write less than 150 and obviously not write more than 200 words because that way you would end up with an email that includes um, lengthy information that might not be required by the task. So it's very important that you follow these guidelines very carefully. Now, the CELPIP writing task is going to be done on the computer, just like the other parts of the test. So. This means that typing speed is very important. So if you feel that you are not uh, fast enough when it comes to typing, well, you need to work on that. And one of the best ways to do so is to um, focus on games that teach you how to type fast. I'll provide a link to a web page that will provide you with a whole range of different games that you could play in your free time in order to um, improve your typing speed. So check it out, the link is in the description. All right, now let's take a look at the format of the writing and let's see what are the different uh, parts of a typical email task type question. Here we have a sample uh, question on the top right. And as you can see, there are two sections. The section on the left is what we call the description. And what this description does is it provides or presents a scenario, a situation which explains who you are and what's going on. Let's read this example. 
It says, you were on a flight from Vancouver to Toronto. When you arrived home, you discovered that you had left your wallet on the plane. Normally, this is two or three sentences. This is going to explain who you are, where you are, what took place. So it's a very brief description of the scenario. Then we have this part on the right, which is called the instructions. And as the name suggests, this is going to tell us what we need to do in response to this question. So here it says, write a letter to the airline in your letter, you should explain uh, when and where you lost your wallet, describe what the wallet looks like, and say what you had in your wallet. So the first thing that you're going to see in the instructions is the recipient or the receiver. Who is this letter being written to? In this case, as you can see, it's being written to the airline. Right? So we are writing this um, email to the airline. And there are always three bullets. So three bullet points, or we will call these functions. There are three functions in a typical cell pip email prompt. In this case, we need to one, explain when and where we lost the wallet. We also need to describe what the wallet looks like and then finally say what we had in our wallet. Now, it's very important that you cover all of these bullets in your response. And if you miss a function, um, that's going to be very problematic. So it's important to pay attention. There are cases where there are four bullets instead of three, but those are pretty rare. But we'll also cover how you should approach those types of questions in a later video as well. Now, one of the questions that I often get is, how is the CELPIP writing scored? So let's take a look at the scoring criteria. Basically, in CELPIP, you're going to be graded based on four criteria. The first one is called content and coherence. So the first thing the examiner is going to look for is to see whether you have covered all of the bullets, whether you have ideas that are well organized, and whether you have provided examples and supporting details and how well and neatly these ideas have been sequenced. So these contain the elements that decide uh, the coherence and content criteria. The second criteria is vocabulary. So obviously, as this is a language test, they're going to check to see whether you have chosen your words accurately, whether you have used those words in the right phrases, or if you've been um, using the right collocations. They also want to see if you have a range of vocabulary, meaning are you able to use different words and whether you can use those words with precision and accuracy. The third variable is called readability. So what readability means is whether you have formatted your writing well, whether the paragraphs make sense, whether they've been logically divided, um, have you used appropriate connectors and transitions? Have you used proper grammatical structures? And if you have any spelling or punctuation or, you know, mechanics, issues related to mechanics in your, in your writing. And then finally, the last variable that they'll consider is task fulfillment. And the name pretty much speaks for itself. Task fulfillment is about whether you have answered the question. So if you write something that's off topic, that's going to hurt your task fulfillment score. Have you uh, completely answered all of the elements in the question? Have you covered all of the bullets? Um, have you used an appropriate tone in your writing? And also whether you have met the word count. So nothing less than 150 and not more than 200 words. Now, in this course, I'm going to teach you 
everything you need to know in order to write a model response for CellPip email writing or CellPip task one. We're going to start by looking at the steps you need to take in order to properly understand the task, to plan your response, to brainstorm ideas and draw an outline based on the topic. And we're also going to cover some very useful language structures and language boosters that you could use to really improve your score on the test. Now, in the next video, we're going to learn how to properly understand the task and we're going to cover some of the common mistakes that students make in CELPIP writing task one. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, guys. Let me know in the comments which of the CELPIP writing tasks you feel is more challenging and what are some difficulties that you think you might face when taking the exam. See you all in the next video.